ان الحمد لله وحده الصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العلي الحكيم recording in progress بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم all praise be to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his choices blessings be upon the prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam the hadith we are going to discuss today is on the authority of sayyidina jabir ibn abdullah radiyallahu anhuma عن جابر رضي الله عنه ما أن رجلا سأل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أرأيت إذا سليت المكتوبات وصمت رمضان وأحللت الحلال وحرمت الحرام ولم أجد على ذلك شيئا أأدخل الجنة قال نعم رواه مسلم سيدنا جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه ما نريدس that a man asked the prophet صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم that if i perform five time prayers i i observe the fasting in the month of ramadan wa ahlaltu halal and i observe the halal things wa haramtu haram and i stay away from the prohibited things walam ajid ala dhalika shay'a and i do not increase anything over it aadkhulu aljannah shall i enter the paradise all prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered Naam, yes, you will enter the paradise. So this hadith is actually telling us the basic requirement. The discussion of today's session is the basic requirement for a person to enter the paradise. How a person can save himself from from the punishment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and how a person. and titles himself or what is the we can say simply what is the basic eligibility basic basic criterion to enter the paradise and as far as this hadith is concerned uh this hadith clearly mentions the importance of wajibat because sayyiduna jabir ibn abdullah says radiyallahu anhu the man asked that he said idha sallaytul maktubat maktub actually means the one which is obligatory idha sallaytul maktubat when i perform obligatory prayers wa sumtu ramadan i observe fasting in the month of ramadan wa ahlaltu halal i observe all the permissible things halal wa haramtu haram and i stay away from the prohibited things walam ajid ala dhalika shay'a so he he is talking about the basic obligations and basic prohibitions of islam and this hadith is as i said uh, it, it it leads us that whoever observes the obligations stays away from the prohibitions dakhal al jannah he will enter the paradise and there are a number of ahadith in this context there are a number of ahadith which support the meaning of this hadith like sayyiduna abu sa'id radhiyallahu anhu he narrates from the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam that prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said ma min abdin yusalli as salawat al khams there's no there is no any servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who performs five time prayers wa yasuma ramadan he observes the fasting in the month of ramadan wa yukhriju zakata he pays the proper zakah wa yajtanibu al kaba'ir as sab'a and he stays away from seven major sins illa futihat lahu abwab al jannah except that the doors of jannah are open for him yadkhulu min ayha sha'a so he will enter paradise whichever door he wishes to then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited the words in tajtanibu kaba'ira ma tunhauna an nukaffir ankum sayyi'atikum if you stay away from the major sins ye have been prohibited we will nukaffir ankum sayyi'atikum we will wash away your sins this hadith is reported by recorded by imam an-nasa'i and also ibn hibban rahimahullah taala and there is another hadith imam ahmad and imam an-nasa'i has recorded on the authority of sayyidina 
Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiyallahu anhu that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Man abad Allah, whoever worshipped Allah la yushiruku bihi that he is not associating anything partnered with him wa aqama salah he performed the salah wa ata zakah he, he gave the zakah wa sama ramadan observed fasting in the month of ramadan wa jitanabal kabaira and stayed away from the major sins falahu jannah jannah belongs to him aw dakhal al jannah our prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam he entered the jannah and there is another hadith on the authority of Sayyiduna Dhimam ibn Thalaba radiallahu anhu that he came to when he, when he visited the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam then he mentioned five time prayer Siyam fasting in the month of Ramadan Zakat, Hajj and all the basic obligations of Islam when he completed Sayyiduna the Imam Ibn Thalaba radiallahu said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah. I bear the witness that there is no worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is messenger of Allah. Vasu'addi hadihi al-fara'id. Wa ajtani wa ma nahaytani anhu. I will perform these obligations and I will stay away from these prohibitions. La azidu wa la ankus. Either I will neither increase nor decrease. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ إِنْ صَدَقَ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ If he is truthful in his saying, in his statement, that he will perform the obligations and he will, he will abstain the prohibitions. إِنْ صَدَقَ If he is truthful in his statement, دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ He will enter the paradise. And there is another hadith on the authority of Sayyiduna. Abu Ayyub radiallahu anhu that anna rajulun qal that a man asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akhbirni bi amal yudkhiluni al jannah O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he informed me about an act that will cause me to enter the paradise you, you lead me to the acts that will cause me to enter paradise qal ta'budullah la tushiriku bihi shay'a that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you do not associate anyone partner to him. You establish a prayer. You pay the obligatory charity. And in this hadith, one thing is added that you maintain the ties of kinship. And uh, Imam Muslim has also mentioned this hadith. And, uh, but there is a slight difference in the wordings. He says, the, the man asked, You inform me about an act Yudinini min al Jannah that brings me close to Jannah. Wa yubaiduni min al Nar and takes me away from Jahannam. And Imam Muslim also adds that Falamma Adabar, when that man was about to leave, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, In Tamasaka bima umirabi, when he left, Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, In Tamasaka bima umirabi. If he performs what he what is commanded to him, the Khalil Jannah, he will enter the paradise. And there is another hadith on the authority of Sayyiduna Talha ibn Ubaidullah radiallahu anhu that a bad woman came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a disheveled hair and he said O, o Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you inform me what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory upon me in terms of salah. Prophet sallallahu answered, five time prayer. Except you perform optional prayers. Then he said, you inform me what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory upon me in terms of fasting. Prophet said, shahru Ramadan is a fasting of month of Ramadan. Illa an shaya. Except you observe the optional fasting. Then he said, he informed me about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory upon me in terms of zakah, in terms of charity. Then Prophet wasallam informed him about the basic pillars of Islam. Then he said, وَالَّذِي أَكْرَمَكَ بِالْحَقِّ By he who blessed you with the truth, لَا أَتَتَوَّعُ شَيْءٍ وَلَا أَنْقُسُ مِمَّا فَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَيَّ شَيْءَ I won't perform any optional prayer except 
what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory upon me. In terms of salah, no optional salah. In terms of fasting, no optional fasting. In terms of zakah, no optional sadaqah, no sadaqah nafila. Then Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aflaha in sadaqah. He got the success and salvation if he is truthful in his statement. Or dakhal al jannah in sadaqah. Or Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he, he entered the jannah if he is truthful in his statement. So here we can also see the, the it is only the basic structure of Islam, or, or simply simply we call it as pillars of Islam. And he 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 said with full certainty that la 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 wa shay'a. I don't perform any form of optional prayer except what Allah has made obligatory upon me. So Prophet Sallallahu said that whoever performs these obligations, he got the Jannah. And uh, there's another hadith by Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah that Sayyiduna Ibn al-Muntafiq Ibn al-Muntafiq says Ataytu Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa huwa bi Arafat I came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was in Arafat Fakultu I asked I said Sinatan as'aluka anuhma There are two things, two issues I want to ask you about Ma yunjini min al-nar wa ma yudkhiluni al-jannah See the the wisdom of Sayyiduna Ibn al-Muntafiq radiallahu anhu is I just want to ask only two things you tell me, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma yunjini min al-nar, what brings emancipation of, what brings emancipation for me from the hellfire, wa ma yudkhiluni al-jannah, and what, what will cause me to enter the paradise, what will save me from, what will prevent me from the hellfire, and what will cause me to enter the paradise. Just two things, and these two things is the gist of one's salvation. Call Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In kunta aw jazta fil mas'ala, lakad a'adhamta wa atwalta. Subhanallah. He said, you have very precisely asked the question, but this question is, uh, you have encompassed everything into it. Because by the end of the day, our all objective is to be prevented from the wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Jahannam is, the hellfire is actually, is a place of displeasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Jannah is a place of pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever enters the Jannah, it means that Allah is pleased with him. And whoever just push it into the hellfire, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with him. So Jannah is a manifestation of Allah's pleasure. And Jahannam, the hellfire, is a manifestation of Allah's displeasure, Allah's anger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from all forms of punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we won't be able to bear it. Considering our weaknesses, we won't be able to bear it. Though our amal or not that makes us to, to that makes us eligible for the Jannah, but there is still we hope that for the Rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That out of his mercy, inshaAllah, he will save us, protect us from his punishment, and will inshaAllah cause us to enter the paradise. When he asked this question, so Prophet just fil masala. Even though you have made it precise, but it in walta. You have truly asked one of the great things. Fa'akal anni idan. Then listen properly from me now. Fa'akal min anni idan. Since you have asked this important question, now bear in mind and Listen properly. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you do not associate anything, any one partner to Him. You establish the obligatory prayer. You pay the obligatory charity. You observe the fasting in the month of Ramadan. Whatever of people you whatever you wish of the people for you, you should treat them the same way. 
And whatever you dislike of people for you, then you should also avoid such things towards the people. So the way you want people to treat you, you should also treat them the same way. Because you never want, you never wish to be treated, to be mistreated by the people. So you should not also mistreat others. You never want other people to have negative thoughts about you. So you should not have the negative thoughts about them. That's what in, in precise Prophet said, Whatever you wish of the people for you, you should also treat them the same way. And whatever you dislike of people for you, you should also avoid it. And uh, so in, in this hadith we can also find out this, there is only the basic structure of deen is discussed. Basic obligations. And these obligations are, we call them, athawabit. Athawabit means the constants of Islam. There, there will be no change at all in this basic structure of Islam. So these amal, they are means which ensure for a person to enter the paradise. The, actually, there are two things we need to understand. Entry to paradise requires two important things. One, asbab, or the conditions. There are certain conditions that which have to be fulfilled, and there are certain impediments, obstructions, which have to be removed. If a person is only thinking that he observed these amal, so it means one part he, 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 he completed, and that part is shurud. The conditions. So this is a, these are the basic conditions to enter the paradise. However, there can be impediments. A person may be having all this structure with him, all these basic amal, basic obligations with him. But if he did not remove the obstructions, then still uh, the, the entry to Jannah will be dif will be difficult for a person. And what is the what are the impediments? That is muharramat. Because in, this, in these types of ahadis, we only just found what Prophet ﷺ mentioned or what the people asked about is the only obligations. It doesn't mention about the prohibitions. So it means that, but there are other ahadis in which there are many amal upon which Prophet said ﷺ that they will prevent a person to enter the paradise. So meeting the conditions, performing the conditions and then uh, removing the impediments, removing, removing the obstructions. So these are two important conditions for ent entry to paradise. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah has mentioned a hadith on the thought of Sayyiduna Amr ibn Murrah al-Juhani radiallahu He says, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I bear witness that there is no worthy of worship except Allah. And you are the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I perform five time prayer. I I give obligatory charity of my wealth. I observe fasting in the month of Ramadan. Prophet whoever passes away on this, Allah will gather him with prophets, the truthful and the martyrs. Yawmul Qiyama on the day of judgment. Hakada. Then Prophet showed that how close he will be with them. However, as long as he does not disobey his parents. So this hadith is now telling us, start. Now we will see a set of ahadith, a group of ahadith in which prohibitions are mentioned, obstructions are mentioned. Those amal, those prohibitions which can hamper one's entry towards the Jannah. And this hadith is telling us about disobeying the parents. So if a person is performing five time prayer, observing the fasting in the month of Ramadan, he is paying the zakah but he is not obedient to his parents. Though one part he, is, he has fulfilled, he met the conditions but there is obstruction, there is an impediment and this hadith tells about it it is ma, ma lam as long as he does not disobey his parents. So it means disobedience to parents may prevent a person to enter the paradise. Uh, there is a hadith about Sayyiduna, if I'm not mistaken, Sayyiduna Al-Qamah radiallahu anhu. Uh, he was having his last time and the Sahaba around him, they were asking him, they were giving talqeen as Prophet Shad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
لَقِّنُوا مَوْتَاكُمْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Those who are having the last moments in life, you must, you must do talaqeen of لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ But we should not address directly, but the, those who are around the person, they should recite لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ loudly so that he remembers لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And he wanted to pronounce La ilaha illallah, but he couldn't. Now all the Sahaba were, and they asked him, Shaykh, he said, I want to say, but I cannot. I don't know what, what prevents me from saying La ilaha illallah. So one of the Sahaba went to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Prophet came, and Prophet said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say La ilaha illallah. He said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is something that prevents me to say this. Then Prophet asked for his mother, because he was having a mother. Prophet asked Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi his mother about al -Qama. Then she began to complain that he was a very pious person, performing all the obligations, but he was also disobedient of me. He has annoyed and offended me many a times. He never left his tahajjud. She, she began to explain his, the, his pious part, but at the same time, his, disobe his disobedience to his mother. So his, he has annoyed me a lot. And he has offended me a lot. So I won't forgive him. Prophet said, if you don't forgive, forgive him, then he will enter the hellfire. She took it, she did not take it seriously in the first time. Then Prophet said, okay, when you have decided not to forgive him, so he commanded the Sahaba, you go and bring the firewood. Now she asked the Prophet, what do you have to do of the firewood? She said, Prophet said, since you are reluctant to forgive him, so he is going to, he is directly going to the hellfire. So before he goes there, we will burn him here. So then she began to just, the, now the, the, the motherly affection began to sprout from her, from, from her heart. And she said, I won't allow anyone to touch my son. Then Prophet says, okay, forgive his sins. Then she said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have forgiven him. The moment she said, I have forgiven him, Sayyiduna Al-Qama said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. So we understand from this hadith that on one side, if a person meets all the conditions, then there are also the obstructions that have to be removed. And if a person does not stay away from the prohibitions, his meeting the conditions will not be sufficient for him to cause him to enter the paradise. As far as the obstructions are concerned, there are many of the authentic ahadis that some of the people who commit, who perform major sins, these major sins will prevent them to enter the paradise. Like Prophet Sallallahu the one who cuts off, who severs the relationship, who cuts off the relationship, he will not enter the paradise. Qati or Rahim, the one who severs the relationship, who severs the, uh, who does not maintain the relationship with the kids and kins. Our Prophet sallallahu min kibar. Any person who is having kibar, arrogance in his heart to the weight of an atom, he won't enter the paradise. If a person is having one of the hadith says mustard seed, kibar arrogance equal to the mustard seed, he won't enter the paradise. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi You won't enter the paradise until you believe. Wala hatta tahabu. And you won't believe until you love one another. So there are many of the hadith like and one of the hadiths also says those who are uh, under the debt. So debt can prevent, debt can prevent a person to enter, uh, enter the paradise. Even if he is a martyr, even if he is shaheed in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he had borrowed some amount from someone else and he could not liquidate it before his death, before his martyrdom. So this can be an impediment, this can be an obstruction for him to enter the paradise. Uh, and uh, some of the aslaf, some of the pious predecessors, they are reported to have said that a man will be detained at the door of the Jannah for 100 years 
due to a sin he has committed in dunya. So these are known as obstructions. The first type of ahadith are known as conditions. And these, uh, these type of ahadith in which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say for example Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the one who commits backbiting won't enter the paradise. So these type of ahadith they are known as mawani'a. So first set of ahadith are known as conditions, shurud. And second type of ahadith, second set of ahadith, they are known as mawani'a, the obstructions, the impediments. So they can impede one's entry towards the Jannah. So therefore, and now we can understand uh, the meaning of those ahadith in which it is mentioned that uh, if a person just say la ilaha illallah, he will enter the paradise. Actually, these, they also come into the category of the conditions. Then there are the mawanya, there are the obstructions. So, I, I always say that we need to understand the ahadith. It's not just one single hadith we find out, then we just pass our ruling on it. Rather, we need to understand a particular concept. It is broader section and broader context of the ahadith. Then we can place a sound opinion on it. Say for example, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ قَالْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ ثُمَّ مَا تَعْلَى ذَلِكِ إِلَّا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ If any of the servant of Allah says لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ and he, he dies on it, he will enter the paradise. Sayyidina Abu Zar رضي الله the narrator of the hadith, he says I asked it, وَإِنْ زَنَا وَإِنْ سَرَقْ If he has committed fornication, if he has committed theft قَالْ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَإِنْ زَنَا وَإِنْ سَرَقْ If he has committed fornication, if he, even if he has committed uh, the theft. قَالَهَا سَلَاسَ Three times Sayyidina Abu Zar asked this. And all the three times Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi And the fourth time Prophet said أَلَا رَقْمِ أَنْفِ أَبِي ذَرْ Despite the reluctance of Abu Zar, he will enter the paradise. And Sayyidina Abu Zar left the place and he was saying, When Rahima Anfu Abi Zar, despite the reluctance of Abu Zar, he will enter the paradise. So this means, actually, this doesn't mean that now this hadith gives license to, for a person that once he says La ilaha illallah, then he can commit any form of sin. That's what happened, well, that's what happened with the murjiyah. So mere expression of faith is a, is a precondition to Jannah. And then there are certain obstructions as well. So if we say, if we take only this hadith, there's authentic, and this hadith has been reported by Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, this authentic hadith. There's another authentic hadith in which it is mentioned that Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu he was searching for the Prophet وسلم, and he could not find him anywhere. Ultimately, he saw him in a garden. And there was no way to enter the garden except a small hole and out of difficulty, Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he entered through that hole and ultimately he met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And Prophet said to Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Abu Hurairah, you take, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave as a symbol, his sleeper, his shoe, and said to him, you go and you tell people that whoever says la ilaha illallah will enter the paradise. And Sayyidina Abu, Abu Hurairah became very happy radiallahu anhu. When he came out and he was in a state of joy, because this is the hadith that Prophet said, وسلم, whoever bears the witness of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will enter the paradise. And on the way, on his way back, he met Sayyidina, Abu, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. He said, Abu Hurairah, where are you going? He said, Prophet has sent me to tell the people that whoever says la ilaha illallah he will enter the paradise. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab he gave him a strong punch that he knocked him down on the ground. And meanwhile Prophet came and Sayyidina Abu Huraira he complained to the Prophet that Sayyidina Umar he punched him. Then Prophet asked Umar why did you punch him? He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa If you say to the people, whoever says la ilaha, then they won't do the amal. They will misinterpret the hadith. They will think now la ilaha illallah is a license for committing any sort of any sort of offense, any sort of 
major sin. They won't understand the significance and the placement of this hadith. Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are right. Then he did not, then he said to Abu Hurairah, don't say this.